All right, step two of the chaser build. We're gonna be looking at mounting the rudder, the turn fin, and the trim tab. Since the last video, I have the motor mount epoxied in, and I have got a stuffing tube support right there in the middle. I thought about making a carbon stuffing tube mount, and I decided just to use the aluminum one that they provided, and I made two little, little clasps right there. Right now, they're just super glued in until I can uh, put epoxy on them. But before I wanted to do that, I wanted to make sure I get everything set up back here. Um, and I actually got it lined up really well. So let's look at this, and then we're just gonna slide it out. Let's look how good we got that. It is like perfect, perfect fitment. Beautiful, beautiful. These are the turn fins that we're going to be using. These are the little carbon carbon kit that OSC sells. Come down here, and what I'm thinking about doing is right here, kind of on this spray rail, I want the outside of the uh, turn fin to be just on the inside of the spray rail, kind of like that. That'll give me the best distance away. I'll probably be up off the base of the hull, maybe, I don't know. 3 16 of an inch like so and that'll give me enough room for my nuts on the inside and it won't put it all the way over here it'll probably go something like that and then that'll give me enough space for when I want to mount the rudder the rudder is going to go something like this yep it's going to go like that and then that will also provide me enough room for my trim tabs. I'm going to try to put the trim tabs something like so. So my, my whole thought process and expectation, I originally thought I can work my way from the inside out. But I would rather work my way from the outside in. That way I can figure out exactly where I want to put these trim tabs. I don't want to put them here. And I don't want to put them up here, like, interfering with the rudder. So I want to put them in, a, in kind of a, a moderate spot. These are not very big trim tabs. These are kind of small. But we don't need big trim tabs. I feel I'd, I'd like to try some smaller ones like this for this build. Because I just don't think it's necessary to have big, long, twin uh, trim tabs. What I've typically learned is the dual trim tabs, you don't ever mess with one side of it. So... I'm going to try to split the difference and see if that helps, but it'll be the first boat I built from scratch, so it'll be kind of cool to see, you know, what the end result is and how it performs, plus these are free. They were donated to the channel, so cool. All right, I'm going to get to work on marking my holes and start drilling. All right, got the turn fins all on. <clears throat> got them mounted. They're looking nice. Now I'm going to work on mounting the rudder. It is now the next day, and I've got the rudder bracket all mounted on there, looking nice. And I went ahead and put one trim tab on. And what I decided to do with the trim tab was, I'll show you here. So basically, I don't know if this is right, wrong, or what, <clears throat> but I wanted the edge of the rudder bracket to fall right in line with the edge of the trim tab. See that? Right in line with it. So, not sure if that's going to make any difference, but <clears throat> worth a try anyways. So now I just have to get really, really good, really accurate about putting the one on this side equal to the one on this side. So I'm going to work on that now. So I got the other trim tab all mounted up, and I decided to do a uh, little through hole right there for the rudder, for the rudder arm. Got that looking nice and sleek. And um, you can see in here, the little quarter inch brass tube I put through the, through the back of the wall. Looks good. And what I did with all these pieces, they come with these round button head Allens. I didn't want to use those, those big old fat heads. So what I used, I swapped them all out for the round smooth heads. That way it looks a little bit cleaner. 
over here I did have to use the ones for this they were a specific size but I think it looks pretty clean cool okay next step is I think I'm gonna start mounting the servo okay well it's been a few hours since the last clip but I've got the rotor all done and the arm through there I'm gonna have to clip that off but I got my servo mounted. I know y'all are gonna be y'all gonna be hounding me. Why well, you got such long supports on your servo? But I'm basically using what I've already got. So those were pieces that I cut off of the extended motor mount, right? So I had to utilize the stuff at my disposal, so I didn't really have to make anything. So it's basically like leftover pieces of this, but this wasn't tall enough. So I had to get that piece there which was tall enough which is cool kind of blends in kind of blends in right now i've just got the front tacked with some super glue and <clears throat> i had to straighten it up so i've got a little piece of tape kind of holding it straight and um i'm gonna go ahead i've got some 30 minute epoxy over here mixed up with a wee bit of graphite in it so it'll kind of blend in it'll look like what we put down here see how smooth and clean that looks Got some dust in it right now, but other than that, it's all right. So I'm going to go ahead and work on putting that in there. And then, uh, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, that'll be in there right and tight. Had a little bit of drip through. I really wasn't expecting that to happen, but kind of did it on both sides ever so slightly. But I got that all epoxied in, looking good. Should, should work pretty good. Should work pretty good, but I've never made my own servo mount so it's kind of something new to me but other than that i think we're pretty well good all i've got to do is uh, take my little dremel cut this back off here and then i gotta formulate a game plan on how i'm gonna bring water through here i don't know if i'm gonna go like up and in the top or in through the back I haven't decided that yet so i think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on these I don't know which one I want to use yet so these are the ProBoat style hatch locks and these right here are the offshore electric medium style hatch locks and I only got two because I only wanted to put them in the back there wasn't enough you know room up here in the front and I wanted to make some sort of lip on the uh, the cow to see if uh, I could just lip it in the front and then put these in the back so I'm gonna do a little bit of research here and figure out which way I want to go and then uh, and then I'll show you what I decide so I decided to go with these hatch locks medium ones and we're gonna put them here you can see right there where I put the X and where I put that X and what that is that's five eighths of an inch up and we're gonna keep them both in the middle of these green lines and that'll put it right smack dab in the middle of the meat of the corner. So that'll be good. And what I like to do, I wanted to share this with you, because drilling um, these boats, I've learned, the drill bits like to wander sometimes. So I will use this little tip right here on my Dremel, and that'll kind of give me like a pilot. That'll kind of give me a little divot, kind of like you would use a punch but you can't use a punch on this, so you need to use something with a fine point. So this is what I like to do. <laughs> that gives me just enough to start it with my drill bit. Let me come over here and do this side. Perfect. Perfect little punch. Now we're going to take this and drill all the way through. Now that I've got the pilot holes drilled, the mounting hole here is going to be a 15 30 seconds of an inch, which is somewhere around, I'm going to say 11 point, yeah, 11.5 is what I was assuming, but 11.9. Um, so what I do, I don't have a drill bit that is that size. So we're going to size down to 3 8 of an inch because if you went half inch, half inch is going to be too big. So we'll do 3 8 of an inch, which is the drill bit size under half. 
and then we will just sit there and and ream it out a little bit with our um, little reamer tool here or we'll use the Dremel with a little rasp and then come over here this is we're gonna use 5 16 we'll drill our hole for this shaft here and that's only gonna be in the lid got these bad boys looking good heck yeah loving it now all I gotta do is uh get these perfect and then we'll be good to go Got them on, got them looking good. Everything went together perfectly. Very, very excited with how it turned out. I don't know what I'm gonna do about the front if maybe I just have to tape it. Um, I've got this stuff here that I can put around it. I don't know if I have enough space. I think it would end up raising the lid if I tried to put some sort of foam or rubber seal around it. Um, but I don't think I really needed hatch locks, but I wanted to put them on there because I've never ran them. But for right now, holds it on really well. We'll pop this one. Pop this one. I got a little surprise inside. We're gonna open it up. Bum, bum, bum. Hydrax 8S. Now I took this out of Daredevil because of the prospected motor I was gonna run. And I'm gonna share it with you because I didn't get exactly the motor that I wanted. Um I still got a couple odd and in things here that I have to do, but um, because of the style of motor I wanted to run, which is 3S, 4S, I decided to go with a high KV value. Um, it is not a rocket motor or anything like that. It is a, um, it's a different motor. It is a Poseidon motor, and I'll make another video covering this, but I wanted to include it in this video as well. Now, while I have the motor out, I've also got the brand new WFLY X9S. Um, I wanted to pull that out. I've got the, re the receiver here. So I'm at the point now, since everything on the boat is pretty much done, um, I have to start thinking about fitment and CG, trying to get 70-30, and I want to make sure the boat is really kind of compensated left and right just as much as front and back so i'm taking all that into account here uh very careful meticulous about where i'm going to be placing the esc and the motor and um you know the receiver not much weight but i gotta think about the antenna coming through the hull i like an external mounted antenna i get excellent range i like 1500 feet man i don't want to take it out in the lake and then lose reception and you know, stuff like that. I've, I've had that happen before. But um, I want to go ahead and open this motor up and show it to you. Let's go ahead. I originally had placed an order for a 2560 KV motor. And we went back and forth with about 15 emails saying that they had it in stock. And then they had it in the warehouse. And then we ordered it. And I ordered it. And then the warehouse didn't have it. And then yada, yada, yada. They wanted to give me a refund. And they were like, is there any other motor that you can choose um, that you would like? Well, this is a lot bigger than the one I wanted. Um, but it's the one that has the closest KV value. But this is like a pro motor. So this actually has a metal wrapped rotor on the inside. Similar to, you know, TP's uh, CM motor and their SVM motor. Um, now I do have this style motor in an 1800 kV and this is 3000 kV. This is a 4092. 4092, really big, really big. But I figured if we're going to run this, we might as well run a, a big ESC that can handle it. I believe the X8S can handle this. Um I'll have to do a little bit of math. I think it was like 100 and 79 amps or 169 amps is what this thing is supposed to run um but it's not like a long run motor this because it's metal wrap i think this is more kind of like a you know one hitter quitter 60 second run so leave a comment in the comment section let me know what you think i am going to run this motor eventually and what i thought about doing was just kind of leaving the 1650 TP motor in there and run it on 4S and run it with the Hydra because I want to be able to take the boat and just hold full throttle and let it rip. That that was like my goal. 
And I wanted to do that with like a 25 or 2600 kV motor to where I could do it on 3S or 4S. And now I have this Poseidon motor, <clears throat> which I had originally thought about maybe putting that in the bigger rigger, um, which would be kind of cool. But kind of rambling on at this point. I know the video is running long, but I wanted to, to showcase the motor. That way I could get viewers' opinion on what y'all think I should do. Because originally the Poseidon motor, the one I wanted, was for the boat. It was for the Chaser 32. And then I didn't get the one I wanted. But I got one close to it. Why not, you know? Um, having bad luck with different motor brands. Um, I ran this motor. It's over here on my shelf. It's right here. I ran this in the Dominator. It was the first motor upgrade I ever did on the channel. Excellent, excellent motor. These are Steve, Steve New Design motors that Poseidon brands. And um, they're really strong. Really strong. And uh, honestly, they're cool running compared to most other motors. But um, we're just going to set that to the side. And uh, I still got quite a mess. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I've got most of it done. I think uh, the rest of it's kind of like preliminary stuff. Set something here and there, you know, testing it. But I'm going to... I'm going to hang a string from my light and hold the boat uh, with my CG um, thing to where I can support it. And then I'm going to start setting stuff in it to where I can figure out my weight distribution. But I'm going to do all that off camera. I'm sure this video is probably 15, 16 minutes long at this point. So it's kind of dragging on. And I want to do one or two more um, build series parts for the boat. This will be part two. And uh, I'll see you all in a few days for part three. Peace.